Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. We're back to work on the power draw bar for the Bridgeport Mill. We got the base plate done. And today we're going to make these two guide rods, guide shafts, whatever you want to call them. And there's also a couple of brass bushings I need to make. I printed out some separate drawings for these just to make it a little bit easier for me to follow when I'm putting these together. They're not really all that necessary, but I guess it's the OCD in me that makes me do it. Well, for this guide shaft, whatever you want to call it, guide rods, I'm going to use this piece of half-inch material I got from a scrap purchase. I think it's a chrome hardened rod. It's a half of an inch in diameter. The outside of it's extremely hard. I'm not able to cut it with my bandsaw, so I'm going to have to cut it with an abrasive wheel. A long time ago, before I had my horizontal bandsaw, I needed a way to cut some one by one square tube and couldn't really afford a bandsaw at the time. So I picked up this tool from Clutch, which uses a angle grinder as a cutoff tool. It's pretty simple to set up and use, and you can use just about any angle grinder, including this cheap one that I got from Harbor Freight. Uses a couple of bolts and some jam nuts to mount the angle grinder where you would normally screw in the handle. I'm opting to take off the guard off of the angle grinder. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that anyone who uses this tool do the same because it does present a rather unsafe situation. But not having that guard on there makes it a little bit easier for me to square up the blade. There's a couple of adjusting feet that you use to adjust the tilt angle of the angle grinder which if you get it just right you should get something pretty close to square. I also want to make sure that this fence is as square to the blade as possible. I'm going to end up facing off the ends of the rod on the lathe but I don't want to have to take off more than I need to. While I get this first piece cut, I want it to be 5 inches long. I'll cut this at 5 and an 8 and that will give me a little bit to face off but not too much. And the second piece is going to be about six and a half inches long. Well, the cutting operation does leave a little bit of a burr, but I'll just use the side of the cutoff wheel to take care of that before we bring it over to the lathe. Well, I've got the four jaw chuck in the lathe with some aluminum soft jaws, although I don't think the soft jaws are really all that necessary. Um, I'm using the four jaw because I don't trust the concentricity of my three jaw, and I'm going to be drilling some holes in the end of each of these two pieces, and I want those holes as close to the center as I possibly can get because it is somewhat critical that the distance between these two uh, shafts be very accurate. I have one of my federal dial indicators. I'm a big fan of these federal dial indicators. They're very smooth operating. They're really high quality um, pieces of metrology gear. I've got it on a articulating arm with the mag base and just 
using the same methods everybody else uses to dial in a round object on a four jaw chuck. And that's easily within a half of a thousand. So that's perfect for what I need. As I mentioned, the outer surface of these rods is extremely hard, but it doesn't go all the way to the center. It's only maybe the first 60 thousandths or so. I am going to face this off. Um, I just need to use some cutting oil just to keep things cool. And I'm not taking... Uh, too heavy of a cut here. I don't want to lose any inserts and um, I want at least a decent finish on the end. That does leave a pretty sharp edge so I'm going to just kiss it with a chamfer tool to take off that sharpness. I am going to drill and tap this end of the short uh, rod for a quarter 20 bolt, starting here with a center drill. The tap drill size for a quarter 20 hole is a number seven drill. So we got a number seven in here and I'm going to drill this probably about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch deep at most. Using a chamfering tool will chamfer that hole to make it a little bit easier for the tap to get started. I have a spring-loaded tap follower in the chuck and the taper tap for a quarter 20 tap in this tap handle. And of course I'm using my favorite tapping lubricant anchor loop. Well, I've switched over to a plug tap because I do want to tap these all the way to the bottom of the hole. Finishing up this hole now with the bottoming tap. I'm not 100% sure this is, it was necessary to use the plug tap in between the taper and, and this bottom tap. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I got a good tap all the way to the bottom of the hole, or at least as close as these taps will take it, uh, so I don't have any issues with the mounting hardware. We'll give it a try with some of the mounting hardware, and that feels really good, so that's it for this end. I do want to go ahead and polish this a little bit to remove some of the heat stains that 
ended up on the end of this rod from the cutoff tool and then I'll turn it over and face off the end we'll just make that one completely flat and then the other rod will get drilled and tap on both ends I'll do that off camera the lathe work for these two shafts is complete and I can do a little bit of partial assembly If I did everything correctly, these two should be square to the base plate, and they are. They look really good, and I'm happy so far. I have a 3D mock-up print that I did of the tool shelf that will slide up and down on these two shafts. But my design calls for two brass bushings that will be what rides on the shafts. Those will get pressed into the oversized holes on the tool shelf. I have this piece of brass stock. It's about an inch in diameter that I think this is a piece that I bought from Mr. Pete last year at Arnfest. Outside of doing a couple of experiments here and there, this will be the first time that I've actually turned brass on this lathe. As such, I'm going to take out this uh, insert that I normally use for steel and replace it with one that's designed for brass and aluminum. It's a ground insert and it has a much sharper cutting edge on it. I will start by facing off the end. I really didn't know that turning brass created such a squeal. If this is normal, should I be using some kind of a coolant or lubricant? Leave a comment. Let me know what your experiences are with turning brass. I got the quick change gearbox set for some power feed. So we'll touch off and we'll dial in a little bit here to try to get a good surface so we can take a starting measurement. I'll take a quick measurement here just to see where I'm at and figure out how much further I need to go. My original design for these bushings called for them to be 625 thousandths on the OD, but I changed my mind as I started making this and decided that the rear bushing is going to be 800 thousandths. So right now my target is 800 thousandths for the OD. <laughs>
Well, he overshot by about two thousandths, thousandths and a half, two thousandths, but that's okay because the mating part that that'll get pressed into hasn't been made yet. So I'll How just make it to that dimension. <laughs> Well, the smaller bushing is going to stay at 625,000, so I'll take half of what I've got here, turn down to 798,000, and turn it down to the smaller dimension. Well, I have about 78 thousandths to take off the diameter to get to 625. Six hundred twenty-six thousandths, only a thousandth over. Again, I haven't made the mating part yet, so that'll be just fine. The next step will be to bore these out so they're a nice sliding fit on those half-inch uh, rods. Well, that center drill did not seem to want to touch this brass at all. I think I have a couple of others here. Let me try a different one. Well, it's doing a little bit better, but it still doesn't like it. Well, I'm starting here with a smaller drill than the final size. I believe this is a 3 8 inch drill bit here. We'll drill this. We'll go a little bit bigger until we get to just under a half of an inch, and then we'll switch over to a boring bar. Well, that was acting as if that drill was as dull as a butter knife, and I know it's not. I know that drilling into brass can be a bit tricky uh, and may require a different grind on the drill. I have another one and I'm going to try that first. And that is a nope. This drill didn't do any better. As a matter of fact, it probably did worse. It's almost as if the brass is work hardening. Is, is that a thing? Comment down below if you know. Well, I have a smaller drill that I'm going to give a shot. Maybe this will do a little bit better. We'll see. And the answer is no, that's not doing any better at all. Well, I'm going to take a break from this, do a little bit of Google Foo, and see if I can't come up with something that'll work.
I forgot to hit record when I came back into the shop, but I did find some good information. I grabbed another 3H drill and I honed a relief, ground a little bit of relief on the cutting edge of the drill using a flat stone and it's gotten me to about this point. But it is getting a little bit grabby and every now and again it will grab onto that brass and I have to stop and pull out even though there really isn't appear to be that much chip buildup. Well, this one's jammed in there really good. I can't pull this drill out of this brass for nothing. Um, we'll try a little bit of manual intervention here. Well, this is an old drill bit, so I really don't care too much about buggering up the shaft. I would just like to get it out of this workpiece. I didn't realize just how grabby this brass is. I can turn the drill inside of it, but I can't pull it out for nothing. Well, worst case scenario, I'm going to throw away a drill and cut this off and start over. So I might as well go all out. Hmm. Well, I think this part is still salvageable, so I'll put back a smaller drill I'm using some tap magic cutting oil and at least see if I can't drill it to depth with the smaller drill and then come back with the bigger one and this seems to be drilling just fine so I'm just befuddled as to why I am having so many issues here I should have plenty of depth now on the bore. Now I just got to open it up to the 500 thousandths, 501 that I want for this sliding fit over top of those chromed shafts. So I've got a boring bar in the quick change tool post here and we'll start by uh, doing a, a small skim cut and then we'll measure to see where we're at. Well, the pin gauges I have only go up to 250 thousandths. So I'll use my little Lufkin telescoping snap gauge here to get a measurement and then check with the micrometer. I have a little less than 60 thousandths to cut off of the diameter. I'll see how close I am for the shaft. I'm not even close yet. It's not even wanting to go in. So we'll take another measurement with the telescoping gauge and check it again with the micrometer. Well, we are very, very close. I think I'm going to dial in another two thousandths here off the diameter, and that should get us just where I want to be. Well, that's going in. It feels pretty good, although it is a little sticky. So I think what I'm wanting to do is slow down my feed rate and just take a, a, a spring pass just to clean up that inside surface. Well, 
Well, I'd still call that a good fit, although maybe taking the spring pass was a mistake because I've got a little bit of play in it that wasn't there before, but I think I'll still be good. I'll just have to try to do better next time I need to make something like this. Well, these both need to be a half of an inch long, both the smaller diameter and the larger OD. So we'll set up my parting blade here, lining up the outside edge with the end of the piece, and then I'll dial in 500 thousandths and cut it off. Well, that is, of course, after I chamfer the edge and deburr the inside. With the smaller bushing now cut off, I will come back and face off the end here of the larger bushing, uh, chamfer the edges, deburr it, and cut it off to a half inch. Well, there's a considerable bit of a burr here that was left off of the cut end of these bushings. And my deburring tools aren't really doing all that great of a job at cutting them off. So, and I'm not real happy with the finish here on this one side. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these back in the lathe with some soft jaws and just face them off real quick. Well, I think we've got quite a bit accomplished today. I'm going to call it quits. We got the two shafts finished and we got the two bushings made, which posed a bit of a challenge for me my first time really turning brass. Well, if you enjoyed watching me muddle my way through this, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment, Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I do appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.